Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, my name is Chris Flo, and I have the honor of being the Vice President here at Dignity Washington, and I want to welcome you to our Mass sponsored for the LGBTQ community, our family, and our friends. Um, tonight is the fifth Sunday of um, Ordinary Time, and our presider is Father Dennis. Um, we also are blessed to have a guest homilist, um, Kathleen, with us tonight, um, so that would be very great. Um, we are an inclusive community, which means we ask that you use whatever reverent term for God that you feel comfortable. And in order that there are no interruptions during our service, um, please silence any devices. Also, feedback. Um, everybody might notice there's a camera. We're doing this will be our second live stream um, tonight. So be, able, be sure you can see it online and on Facebook, but nobody that's um, at Mass or, or going to communion will be captured in that. So. Um, but it's an exciting thing that we're doing again this month, as of every second Sunday. Um, so that we all may worship together as family and friends, we ask that you stand um, and greet those around you, and our Mass will begin shortly. Well, you're always good. A little too Hello, how are you? Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome. We gather in this holy place as holy people to receive the crucified Jesus who has risen from the dead and to be transformed to the lives of service for the poor and the afflicted. Let us thirst and hunger for righteousness. Let us thirst and hunger for the body and blood of Christ. Lord Jesus, you raise the lowly and the poor. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you heal the sick and the sinner. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring us back to God. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
keep your family safe, O oh God, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, is this not the fast that I choose to lose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil. If you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The word of the Lord. Just that is his affairs with justice. A just man is a light in darkness to the upright. He will never be moved, forever shall the just be remembered. He has no fear of evil a firm heart, he trusts the Lord. A trust that is a light in darkness to the upright. With a steadfast heart, he will not fear. Open-handed, he gives to the poor. Justice stands firm forever. His might shall be exalted in glory. A 
from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before human beings so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. 
my sisters and brothers, the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever noticed how once in a while, when you hear a familiar parable or another scripture passage, it strikes you in a different way, and something else that you hadn't considered before opens up for you? Jesus' teaching in Matthew's Gospel today was kind of like that for me. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others has always brought to mind the importance of putting my faith in action. But last week, as I reflected on this teaching, two passages from John's Gospel kept coming to my mind. The first was, again, Jesus teaching the people. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And the second passage, at the very beginning of John's Gospel, said, He existed with God from the beginning. Through him all things were made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all humankind. These words really stirred me. We are the light of the world because we came into existence through Christ, the light. We are the light because Christ is the light that lives and burns in us. He is the light that illuminates the darkness we experience in the world and even in ourselves. And we who have come to believe in his love for us and for all are always learning more about what it means to be Christ's light in this, in this world and to let our light shine before others. There was a time when I thought that letting our light shine before others meant doing good deeds wherever the opportunity arose. Good deeds, like Isaiah mentions in the first reading, sharing bread with the hungry, sheltering the homeless, and doing justice for the oppressed. And surely it is in doing good deeds, such as these, that many come to see and experience the light of Christ. Yet perhaps it might also be about something more. Maybe it's also about an attitude and a way of being in a world that is both darkness and light. Because something we share in common with every other person on the planet is that we are a mixture of light and darkness. It's a simple fact of life that we are limited and have flaws, often getting it wrong or missing the point. And we live in a world that is both beautiful and overrun with violence and injustice. However good we are, however beautiful our little corner of the world is, every one of us is affected by the darkness within ourselves and others and in the world around us. And yet, though our motives are always mixed and our less noble side takes over all too often, Jesus still assures us that his light shines in us. The Gospels are clear that Jesus was all about accepting the limitations and loving the vulnerability of others. He was, after all, someone who, as an adult, was not accepted by his own family and neighbors. He didn't have a home he could call his own. And he was rejected by the religious leaders of his own faith. He hung out with people of all backgrounds. 
but mostly with the morally flawed, the social outcast, and those who for one reason or another were on the margins, people in need of acceptance, forgiveness, and healing. This was his constant example to his followers, accepting and loving others and all that was lacking, with all that was lacking and broken in them. Why else would he go around forgiving people their sins and telling his disciples to do the same? Remember 70 times 7? Wasn't his loving acceptance of people as they were, exactly as they were, what freed them for a different perspective on themselves and the possibility to change? And the Beatitudes which appear in Matthew's Gospel immediately before today's Gospel, are a blessing on the vulnerability Jesus tells us we will encounter and are to embrace in this world. The Beatitudes tell us something about vulnerability in ourselves and others. Blessed are the poor in spirit, including those who may feel they have absolutely nothing to offer. Blessed are those who mourn for what they've lost and can never get back. Blessed are those who show mercy, especially those who have every reason not to. And blessed are those whose goodness and integrity are a threat to the powerful. The Beatitudes give us some insight into the way Jesus identifies with and blesses those who are not accepted, who do not have it all together, and are deficient from the world's perspective. Perhaps Jesus wants his light to shine in and through both our good deeds and our failings and our pain. Maybe we are also the light of the world when we both affirm the light and accept the deficiencies and failures in those around us and in ourselves. A few examples come to mind. Perhaps we love some people who are generous with family and friends, who support the hungry and the homeless, and may have a seriously hateful attitude about certain politicians and the people who support them. Something blocks them from seeing good in those whose values they deplore. Perhaps we know someone whose knowledge, talent, or skill we really admire. It's a real gift. And who struggles to stay functional due to depression or an addiction. And of course, many of us love a church that proclaims God's unconditional love for all, especially marginalized people, and whose teachings and practices discriminate against some of the same marginalized people. Perhaps we ourselves do our best to love all of you and still we struggle with attitudes and behaviors we know are not who God made us to be. Darkness may obscure but can never overcome or extinguish Christ's light in us and in everything. Maybe learning to love and accept what is with its light and its darkness is also a way to let the light of Christ shine. In 1992, poet, singer, and songwriter Leonard Cohen released a song called Anthem. I'm sure many of you know it. In Anthem, I hear Lenny urging us to face and accept the inevitable darkness and beauty 
all mixed together in everything and everyone in this world, doing what we can, however imperfectly, to affirm the good, trusting that the light is always and everywhere present in the darkness. It's Anthem's refrain that really says it all. Ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offerings. There is a crack, a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. one voice, let us pray our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, and Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. raise up to our God all those needs that are in our hearts, the needs for our church, the needs for our country, and the needs for our world. Our response this evening will be, God, hear our prayer. That we may be the salt of the earth, bringing the compassion and peace of God to our homes and our communities, we pray. God, hear our prayer. That our church may be a light for the world reflecting in our worship and ministries the love and forgiveness of God, we pray. God, hear our prayer. That all nations may see the justice of God for all people, we pray. God, hear our prayer. That our compassionate God may be present to us in times of pain, despair, and grief, we pray. God, hear our prayer. For all our, in our community who are sick or ill and ask for our prayers, especially Jeffrey and all those in our Book of Common Prayer and those who mention aloud by name. <clears throat> May the healing hand of God touch them and guide their caregivers, we pray. God, hear our prayer. For those in our community who have died, especially our, our community members Mark Jacobs, Ma Michael Forgash, Richard Page, Stephen Alderton, John Long, also for Vince, all those in our Book of Remembrance and those who mention aloud now by name. May they all be at the great banquet with God, we pray. And for what else as a community shall we pray? We pray. We 
pray? God, receive our prayer. God of all goodness, we trust in your promise to come and comfort each one of those who love you and give care and concern for the needs that have been lifted up to you, those that have been spoken out loud, those that live within our own hearts, that you would respond and be with us every day of our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands may become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands it will become for us our spiritual drink. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable before the, our God Almighty in heaven. powerful God, who once established these created things to sustain us, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deeds by which he has freed us 
from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people set apart for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke the bread gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, God, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered together into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, God, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, your clergy, religious, and all your faithful people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all as we pray that with the blessed Mary, Mother of God, and with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have praised you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
when the disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray, Jesus said, when you pray, say, you said to your disciples, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on, your, on our sins, but on the faith of this community. And grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Jesus be with you always. And with your Let us extend to another a greeting of peace. invite all who respect the patrimony nature of the Eucharist to join us at the Lord's table. In order to make the Eucharist more accessible, consecrated graces will be available in a ceramic chalice at the far right.
This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those invited to the banquet of the Lord. Lord, Lord.
Let us continue our prayer. O oh God, you have called us to be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice. Grant us, we pray, that we may live a life joyfully but the life that you have given us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Uh, President of Dignity of Washington. Thank you all for being here. And we also would like to thank our guests watching from all over the world. Really exciting. This is our second time that we televised our mass on Facebook Live. And just uh, for those of you here for the first time or those watching, we reached about 1,800 people last time. So we're really, really thankful. And I uh, just hope that you all find this, this mass in, uh, invigorating. After Kathleen's wonderful homily, I don't think we cannot... Thank you, Kathleen. Uh, before we get to our uh, announcements, just want to give people who are here for the very first time, or if you've been away for a while, and very important, if you feel comfortable uh, standing up, giving us your first name, where you're from. If you're here for the first time, we'd love to hear how you heard about us, and we would give you a warm, dignity Oscar night welcome. I'm the first time, and I apologize, but God is a strange God, and this is a horrible state. Now, believe me, it's no straight and it's no character. I like to think about it, but I heard about you from God. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. We didn't, we didn't get your name, though. What is your name, sir? Beth. Ben. Beth. Beth. Okay. Still Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, well, we have welcome packets in the back if you're interested. All right, I wish you guys could have been here at 4 o'clock. This was so exciting. We had our... Uh, liturgical ministers training. This place was buzzing, buzzing so much that the poor choir had to kind of work in their, their regular workout with us making a bunch of noise. But we have uh, three new readers, five new Eucharistic ministers, and one new acolyte. So if those people can stand, I just want to give you guys a shout out. Hey. Again, for our viewing audience, we are all volunteers, so we really count on everybody to really uh, keep our mass going and all our socials and our social outreach, so thank you so much. Okay, so Lent is quickly approaching. Ash Wednesday is the 26th. On the 27th, we are going to start our Lenten soup nights, uh, starting at 6.30 to 8.30. And in the past, we've had these on Tuesday nights, but they're going to be on Thursday nights. But it's going to be over at the Dignity Center. So please make yourself available. Jeff, and uh, would you like to say something about this? Come on up here. <laughs> so it is, it's a Lenten uh, Simple Suppers. Uh, Dennis and Kathleen and I will be uh, kind of facilitating them, but as usual, uh, you all the stars, right? It's about what you can bring, what you can share. Uh, we're gonna structure it around that Lenten journey of initiation or reinitiation and kind of let the sacraments of initiation that we traditionally do in Lent, and the rite of Christian initiation of adults, and the rites of scrutinies, and the, the rituals that, that uh, those who are becoming baptized might go through. We're gonna go through those in some way ourselves, and uh, let that kind of guide our sharing and our reflection. So we'll be looking forward to sharing it with you. Uh, we'll, all, we'll start by providing the first supper, and then we'll have a sign-up sheet for those who uh, are willing to share in their culinary gifts. Um, <laughs> Dan, you can just bring bread. <laughs> for which we are very grateful. And uh, if you want to sign up, you can talk to Kathleen, Dennis, and myself. Thanks so much. He brings great bread. Oh, you. You, oh man. <laughs> can, we, can we turn off the camera for a minute? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm re a bit remiss in my chronology of events. Actually, let me go back to Mardi Gras, Bat Tuesday. We've been invited by St. Thomas Episcopal, St. Margaret's Episcopal, and St. Luke's Episcopal to the new St. Thomas Church right down in DuPont Circle. All right. Yeah, from 6.30 to 8.30, they're having a Mardi Gras party. So we, anybody's invited, we'd love to have a good crew from Dignity there since we've been part of this wonderful church for over 35 years. So again, that's Mardi Gras on the 25th. Okay, so St. Patrick, Larry, confirm that we're marching. 
Okay, in the past, we have been, for those again watching, we've been marching in the St. Patrick's Day Parade. We were the first LGBTQI contingent, and the second year we marched, we won an award for being the most innovative, or interesting, contingent. Last year, they weren't able to pull it off. I think the, for some reason, they couldn't get the permits or whatever, but we're doing it again this year. I'm sorry? The cost was too much. Oh, okay, so they opted uh, again if you can. The cost was too much last year, so since this year is their 50th year, they really uh, wanted to save up money. So we'll be marching on Sunday the 15th, and Larry will come up with, we'll have uh, more information in the bulletin. Okay, also, not to uh, solo out St. Patrick, we have St. Joseph's coming up on March 28th, and there's going to be a St. Joseph's Day committee meeting next Sunday at 4.30 right here in the uh, library. And again, our wonderful committee is here tonight, and they look forward to a bunch of volunteers for that event, so if you're really interested, please come to that meeting. Last but not least, after Mass tonight, we're gonna have the Blessing of the Throats for St. Blaise. That's gonna take part right after Mass, so please, if you're will, uh, willing to stay for a few minutes, you can come up front and get blessed for that. And also, we have candles. Uh, last week, we celebrated Candlemas, and we have a bunch of extra candles. We're asking that people only take two if you have, didn't get them last week. So they'll be in back, Dan's hand uh, holding them up in the air. Okay, thank you all again. And we just really want to, uh, I'm looking right at the camera now, we really want to thank everybody who's watching us, even for five minutes, 10 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half. We, uh, we're here every Sunday. If any of you are in town, uh, please come be with us. Please spread the word about us. Thank you all for being here tonight on the Oscars. I'm sure you're all taping it, right? So when you get home, you can see who won. But anyway, I think we're all Oscar winners. <laughs> Especially Kathleen. Thank you so much. That The light and darkness theme, uh, that was just beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay, Father Dennis, thank you. Uh, choir, thank you. Chip, our wonderful interpreter, thank you. Everybody who read, uh, who collected money. That wonderful acolyte. <laughs> All right, okay, that's my cue. We'll see you next week. The, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, our celebration is ended. Let us go forth to love and serve the world and one another. Thanks be to God.